Hello. Uh, I'm Joe Fortunato, and welcome to the B. Allen Show. This is a special show about B. Allen. B. Allen is uh, well known in Somerville for the wonderful mural she's been doing, very visible here in Somerville. We all know about the mural that you're painting right now in Union Square. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's known as a wall of respect for men. No, <laughs> <laughs> jokingly. Um, it's the Somerville Gateway Mural Project. Mm -hmm. It says, Welcome to Somerville, home of the first American flag, raised on Prospect Hill, January 1st, 1776. Mm -hmm. And it's nearing completion. It's uh, been a year since I first asked Frank for that wall. And Frank Privetera. Finally got it, yeah. Frank Privetera. Yeah. Uh, you're, you did the mural at, at uh, Perry Park? Yes. That's on Washington Street. Famous kids in history. And we have some photos of that that you're looking at right now. And uh, the Powder House Community School Playground. The beautiful. 150th anniversary of Somerville, Somerville history, dinos through UFOs. That's right. And we have some footage of that that we're showing you right now. What you utilized were drawings that school children in Somerville mm -hmm. uh, drew. And it's actually the, the work of some of the school children. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I've promised to use every single drawing. <laughs> and there were about 500. But about 200 of them were UFOs, which were indistinguishable from each other. So <laughs> I was able to. A lot of flying off. saucers. Nobody complained. <laughs> um, and the Wall of Respect for Women is, uh, is, uh, really uh, made that building look a lot prettier than it was in Davis Square. And uh, now, and now you're in Union Square in the Barristers Building doing um, that mural. The first flag of the colonies was raised on Prospect Hill, mm -hmm. January 1st of 1776. Yep. And George Washington was really there? Well, I had him outside the arch because we don't have an eyewitness saying he was there. Oh. But the only way we even know it happened is through a Britisher who saw it from Boston and pegged the day, and George Washington's own words which said we had hoisted the flag on that day, the day that gave beginning to the new army, which also was the first day of the real army, because before that we'd only had a six-month temporary enlistment. This was the big enlistment for the real revolutionary soldiers that went on to New York. So it's really a, a, the beginning of the army also, but that's... Um, I learned a little point. bit of, uh, about uh, that from uh, Isabel Cheney. I didn't know that originally the revolutionaries they weren't didn't really weren't really trying to uh, uh, separate themselves from Britain well I guess no I mean they spoke English you know it, why would they think to make such a um, extreme break but George Washington in his notes at headquarters that day called Britain our unnatural parent so you see he was not being cozy with them mm. and some people have said that that flag is a rebel flag because it was had a red, there originally there was a red field on the British ensign flag that they put the white stripes through, so it was kind of a rebellious act to do that. Yeah. Although we're not really sure that flag is shown much earlier, maybe 20 years earlier, I've forgotten exactly, and it could have had another significance that we're not sure mm -hmm. where it came from. But it was the closest thing to a national flag right through the revolution, because the Betsy Ross flag wasn't even designed until 77. I'm learning so, so much about the American Revolution just since you, since, you know, seeing this mural and asking questions about it. And I think a lot of people in Somerville are learning more about it uh, because of this mural and, and the attention it's drawing here in Somerville. And we're learning Somerville's part in the Revolutionary War. And, and it's really interesting to me. But we'll get back to that mural a little later on. Uh, I want to, I've learned a little bit about you lately uh, because of this, B, and it's very interesting, uh, all the meals you've done, and they are of the community, about the community, and, and the Powder House Schoolyard, it's drawings made by the children in the community, just like the Perry Park uh, Playground mural. Uh, these were also drawings that, that children sketched mm -hmm. that you uh, yourself put on a wall. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really a, a community effort on that mural. And uh, the Osco drug mural is, is about women in the community. And uh, what's this lady's name? She's Johnny. cost me a lot of money. Johnny. Uh, I just paid my PCO. parking tickets. <laughs> uh, that's what I get for not feeding the meter. 
Um, but these are about the community and uh, with uh, collaboration of the community and you've really gotten involved in the community uh, in order to do this work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, in Union Square, the mural is about the Somerville community's part in, in the Revolutionary War. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. But before that, before you became a muralist, you, I heard you were a graphic designer for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And you designed the logo for what did you work for Sale Magazine? Is it? Well, when we were that? a front end house for about ten magazines in Boston: Horticulture, Boston Magazine, and Sky and Telescope. I mean, a lot of them. I've forgotten them, but I was a designer, and I designed Sale Magazine. I designed the logo of Sale Magazine. So that was. Uh, and I designed the editorial for maybe eight years. Or and that was in your life as a corporate artist. No, this was my life as a graphic designer. Then I see where you took uh, your artistry into the political world. Well, then I came to Somerville. And, uh -huh. um, I actually got divorced and I came to Somerville. And I bought the McGann Bronze Foundry. You know, I have to show you these pictures of the way it looked. It was burned out shell. I only paid 30000 for the whole piece. This is the way it looked. Wow. So, it was a real mess. Yeah. And you bought this? Yeah. <laughs> and renovated it with a loan. They gave you a loan mm -hmm. to buy this place and renovate it? At that time there were 3% loans in Union Square, wow. but I got a 7% loan. And this is the way, this is looking out. This mm -hmm. is looking out, which was the main factory building, which had roof was burned off, and this is the same space now. That's the same mm -hmm. space as looking out there. This, and this is even more recent. You see how much more lush. Uh -huh. And this is the, also the home of the Open Air Circus. Yeah, half of this factory space I renovated as an open air theater because it was impossible to do anything about the roof and it was obvious it had to come off. They just had a, a big show over there. Didn't I see it on Channel 3? The Open Air Circus had its ninth year. It's actually the 11th year of performances there. What we are looking at now is... Renovation. The renovation, which was done by who? Well. Uh, I had a couple of contractors, but a lot of it was just done with friends, you know, whom I paid. That's, there I am. Uh-huh. Now the home of the Open Air Circus. But this is what intrigues me. <coughs> Before you settle down as a muralist, yeah. she settled down, uh, I see you uh, spent some time, and this is a banner you made? Yeah. Uh, urging peace in Central America. And uh, here is a political banner that you made. Uh, Did Bush steal the 1980 elections delay by delaying the hostage release? And now we know he did. Well, it, well I, we all knew at the time that he delayed the, host the hostage release was delayed But uh, he, if on we purpose. Had, his, had this publicized, he might never have gotten to be president. That's true. The invasion of Panama, you weren't really for that. No I was worry. completely against that. That was a major issue for me. There's Gene Burns hosting this demonstration against Bush. Gene Burns, the, the uh, uh, talk uh, host. radio talk show host. Okay. So he hosted this yep. demonstration. Yep. Uh, contra aid, you weren't really for that, no. now were you? No. Because you were mm -hmm. more interested in And I went to Central peace. America with the Women's Convoy to Central America. The Women's Convoy to Central America. Oops. Let's check out this convoy. This is us leaving from Boston. Leaving from Boston, and how did you We travel? drove in 22 uh, trucks. 22 trucks. Yeah. Actually, I guess it was 12 from Boston and 12 from San Francisco. And we met in Texas and went all the way to Nicaragua. So you've settled down to being a muralist, just one building well, at a time. And yes, this is a whole. I've decided that rushing around, protesting, and going to other countries is not what works. It's better to just stay in your own community and get as involved as possible. In and your that, own and the murals seem to do it. Yeah, I mean, they're just every aspect of it involves you with some segment of the community, and it turns out you don't just hit one segment; you right. hit them all. It's nice it's to really be interested wonderful. in, uh, I mean, world peace is important, but uh, well, let's, let's start home. here in some of them. There's enough to do right here. Mm -hmm. Well, this is in a past life.
exhausting. Well, I would do it again, but I mean, I don't know if I have the energy. It was pretty <laughs> exhausting. Can you tell me what this is, Well, Dee? I can't find the whole picture, but my first mural was for Frank Stellato in the Chamber of Commerce. And this showed the different businesses that were on these different streets in Somerville. See there's City Hall? Mm -hmm. So this must be Medford Street. You can assume who those businesses are, and a white mm -hmm. business was mm -hmm. probably had more than 50 people working there. So this was in the Chamber of Commerce office that used to be in Davis Square. Yeah, and I think that was about 1982. That, probably my first mural right. was in Frank's office. Your first mural Frank's in Somerville? Auto. Yeah, oh. my first mural period. I mean, I had right. done some murals in our, um, our office, at, you know, Publishers Design when I was a graphic designer. So you've been making murals for 12 years. And this is a mural you did in uh, an accountant's office here in Union Square? And it's still there. He's a tax accountant, and he's right in Union Square. And he's in, <laughs> a tax office. accountant. So you, you go to his office, I'll and you see Uncle minute, Sam looking right yeah, at you, telling you to pay taxes. But it's funny how many, how many uh, patriotic sort of things I've done in Union Square, because I did the flag in this public safety building. B, I, I found out you were born in New York City mm -hmm. not too long ago. Yes. And you moved to uh, Manchester, Mass, briefly, mm -hmm. but then you actually grew up in New Mexico. Yeah. You spent your childhood in New Mexico. Right. And uh, from New, uh, New Mexico, you traveled to Massachusetts again, and you uh, graduated Milton Academy. Mm -hmm. Milton Academy. And uh, you went to the Boston Museum School? Mm -hmm. Two years. Two years at the Boston Museum School. And, and what was your painting? Ma major there? Painting. Mm -hmm. And you learned to paint at the Boston Museum School. And then you went to uh, in the San Francisco Art Institute? Right. And two, two more years, two and a half more years. Two and a half more years at the San Francisco Art Institute. And uh, you spent, uh, after the San Francisco Art, you would spend 17 years in Boston? I as was 17 years a graphic designer. So from the San Francisco Art Institute, uh, you got a degree? Yeah, I tried painting, but I couldn't make go of it. And you went right into uh, graphic, uh, graphic design, and you did it for 17 years. Um, and then you, leaving that and getting political and then becoming a muralist, uh, and you began um, beautifying Somerville and learning about the history of Somerville and working mm -hmm. with the community here in Somerville. And uh, the Perry Park uh, mural is, is uh, really colorful and involves so many uh, people in this town, and that's why the community can really enjoy it and go by and say, I took part in that, and that's my drawing of Larry Bird. And this is, you oh, left out yes. My, my work. <laughs> yes, look at this. You also, uh, a lot of people don't know that B. Allen designed, uh, can you tell us a little about this? This is at the Sumble Public Safety Building. Well, uh, amazingly enough, this is another flag in Union Square. It's uh, an abstract hanging. An abstract In the public hanging. safety building. That is beautiful. And it's still there. And, and these are other these works are that I did. These are other works you've done, and these aren't in some of them, are they? No, and actually they, these were all temporary works, but I did mm -hmm. a couple of those mm -hmm. for Graham Gunn. And mm -hmm. I was quite well, I uh, learned a little bit about B. Allen, uh, I hope, and we've seen some of her work. Uh, but we're going to be right back after these messages with uh, a couple of B's friends. We're going to have Larry Paolella. Did I pronounce it right? And we're going to have uh, Frank Privetera here on the show. Uh, Frank Privetera's building is the building in uh, Union Square where the uh, uh, Gateway Mural Project is, is being, uh, being uh, presented to all of Somerville. And we'll be right back after this. I, I think B. Allen is just the most wonderful person Somerville can have. We should be very proud of her, especially because of the mural at the Western Junior High at Bosco Drug, and, and particularly the mural that is in the process of being made now at Barristers Hall. Uh, the fact that we raised the flag first on January 1st, 1776, is to our credit, and Cambridge did it on January the 2nd. Unfortunately, a lot of commercial people give the credit to Cambridge because it was George Washington's Cambridge camp. And so good luck to, to 
B. Allen and everybody get behind her. She deserves it. Hi, I'm Al Rubio. I've known B. Allen for quite a few years here in Somerville. Most Somervillians know of her work at the Powderhouse School and see this mural of the Grand Union flag on the Barristers Building as her latest work. From the point of view of some of us, this is only the beginning of a series of murals that can be done on Somerville historic sites and which will end up being a part of what we hope to be a freedom trail in Somerville. Hi, I'm Billy Burke. I've been going out with B. Allen since uh, 1986, and she's just a really hard worker. <laughs> she puts everything into it, and she's going out to New Mexico and rest, finally. But she did, she did a great job on this mural in the Wall of Respect for Women. And next year, I don't know what she's going to do next year, but uh, I guess we're going to endure another summer of uh, madness. <laughs> but it's all fun, and it works out, and it's there for a long time, so I guess it's worth the effort. We're back here with the B. Allen Show. <laughs> I'm Joe Fortunato. I'm here with B. Allen, some of own B. Allen, and we have been joined by attorney Frank Privatera and Lawrence Payalella. Nice uh, to be here. Larry's with the uh, Gateway Mural Project. He's one of the chief fundraisers. He's been out there being a big supporter of bees. And uh, Frank Privatera is the owner of the Barristers Building that uh, B. Allen is decorating with the Gateway Mural Project. And uh, good to see you here, Frank. Pleasure, pleasure, Joe. Welcome to the B. Allen Show. Nice to be here. <laughs> uh, Frank, uh, what is your interest in uh, this mural? Well, I, uh, Why I do think you think it, it belongs on your building? Well, it could belong in anybody's building. I, it just happens that my building was available. B. asked me, and I thought it was a, a noble cause. I think it's a patriotic purpose, and I think uh, B. Allen uh, is a, a fine artist, and she needs uh, a stage to perform so she can be really appreciated. And I think from this TV station, she might end up on the morning show and Jay Leno's and make the tour of the various major television networks. I should have had her under contract. And eventually, uh, her name will be a household word, somewhat like uh, Michelangelo, Raphael, wow. Da Vinci. <laughs> Noble company. I can't ever get higher than this. <laughs> wow, Frank. You deserve it, B. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't she do a great job yes. unifying this city yes. and getting involved in the, the, the community here in Somerville and the history here in Somerville? Yeah. I've learned so much. Yes, I, I wish I had her talents instead of the limited uh, areas that I seem to be uh, successful in. Yeah, she is truly, truly a great artist. I can't take anymore. Okay, that's okay. Now we're going to move on to Larry. What, do you, what, do you, what are your comments, Larry? What do you, you've well, only been for here me, a couple of years. A couple of years, yes. I, I come from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Came up to, to live here and kind of changed my lifestyle from engineer contractor to uh, someone who uh, can get involved in the arts. Uh, not having any particular artistic talent myself, I thought I would kind of put some of my life's experience to work for a friend, neighbor, B. Allen, someone I feel uh, has made an enormous contribution long before I got here to the uh, quality of life here in Somerville by coupling her artistic talent, her personal drive and energy to uh, get people to work together, starting with the children, people like Frank, who are establishment people here in Somerville to come forward and work together to make something quite worthwhile. And uh, uh, fundraising started uh, primarily as Peggy Ryan's suggestion, who is a longtime friend, uh, also in the arts, uh, dancing and stuff, and has uh, benefited from uh, B's creation of the open air theater where Peggy uh, teaches a local yoga class. Right now, you're looking at a photograph that we have of uh, you with Peggy when you were at the uh, Art, uh, Art Beat Festival in Davis Square last mm -hmm. year, and you mm -hmm. were selling T-shirts at the time. Yes, yes. It started about uh, a year and a half ago when V was uh, just about on the tail end of the uh, finalizing the Wall and Respect for Women up at uh, Davis Square at Osco's building. And I was very impressed with that, both artistically, 
But even more so than that, the fact that she involved so many people. So many people. This is, this is the thing. You know, I, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, a big city, and never really had the opportunity to feel like I could make a difference because there were so many of us. Right. But here in Somerville, well, we have the diversity of a bigger city. We have a long history of, of uh, being involved from the revolution forward, obviously. Exactly. And also to uh, 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 make a difference by my personal efforts, by supporting right. people like me. Right. And, and, and it's, been, it's been some hard work. We've gotten some results. And we are looking forward to uh, push this ahead. I would just like to say one word Go right ahead. about, about uh, what it takes, uh, what I've learned about what it takes to be uh, uh, an artist in this uh, American environment. Uh, so much uh, is, is backed by the government and grants and stuff, but I tell you, the way Bay, B handles it, she gets an idea, she goes to a wall owner, presents her idea, prepares the sketches, and then begins to worry about the money. After all, she has a life to support herself and stuff. Right. And I think it takes uh, an awful lot of courage and commitment to begin that way. Right. And fortunately, people like Frank uh, and the city, the mayor has been, been supportive. Right, but, yeah. it, but it was basically uh, Frank and B have made this happen. Right. The city has come in and uh, through the efforts uh, of Let me uh, tell you what, what I really appreciate about uh, her work. Uh, I've met many, I'm from Medford, and I, I moved to Somerville 10 years ago, and I realized there are a lot of artists in Somerville, a uh, different kind of art, uh, people that draw, people that do video art, people that sketch and do paintings and such. But uh, these mural projects, uh, compared to so many artists that do something alone, they're, they're home doing something alone, and it's, you know, they have their painting, they have their, their, their piece, uh, and you really can't get too involved help them because they're doing it and they're doing it alone but but B Allen so many people can come together and all work on the project with her uh, I feel like I'm working on it with her mm -hmm. uh, uh, I know that uh, Carmela Adario likes being involved and we have a photo here of uh, one of the committee meetings mm -hmm. and we have uh, 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 Alan, Alan Wiswald you're looking at this photo right now uh, there's Carmela Adario we're going uh, right to left and there's B and there's Isabel Cheney, and she's right next to a sketch of the uh, wall. And then there's Billy Burke, who is a very good friend of B. Allen's. My partner. Her partner, Billy Burke. And this is? Jim Lees. Jim Lees. And the committee for the Gateway Mural Project meets every Monday? At 4.30 at Somerville Hospital in the cafeteria at Isabel's table. At Isabel's table in the uh, Somerville Hospital cafeteria. And I was really uh, delighted to visit one of those uh, meetings. And Frank, have you been to one of these meetings yet? Uh, you have to drop by some of the hospital, hospital <laughs> at 4.30 some Monday. Historically, uh, Somerville has never really gotten credit for being the spot uh, where the first flag was raised because Somerville was not a township, it was not a city, it just didn't exist. And so it was then Cambridge, Charlestown, Arlington, Medford, but there was no Somerville. And so although that no one disputes the fact that George Washington raised the flag on Prospect Hill, historically across the country, Cambridge has always uh, gotten credit for being the place. And I think B is going to like rewrite history, and uh, the world will know that the flag, no one disputes it, everyone accepts the fact that it was raised on Prospect Hill, but B will bring to the attention of the world that Prospect Hill is in Somerville, not in Cambridge. Mm. Everyone in Somerville will know uh, all about this, and all about the history of this flag raising come January 1st. There is going to be a crowd uh, at Prospect Hill at 11 o'clock on January 1st. Uh, Isabel Cheney will be there. Is that correct? Yeah. And she will be there with Paul Lee, Lee yeah. and Fred Lund. Mm -hmm. Yes, Fred On Lund. On January 1st? January 1st yeah. of 1995, at 11 in the morning, they'll be raising the flag up at Prospect Hill, and then everyone will be coming down to the Barristers Building, and there'll be a ceremony. But there is something the unique stage. about the portrait that uh, uh, B is painting, and I can't say enough about it. It's the archway. 
And if you look through the archway, if you could see beyond the building, you see it's a wall, but if you could see through the wall, you in fact would be seeing Prospect Hill with a flag flying. And that thousands of cars each day will come by and, and uh, appreciate uh, the statement that's being made in behalf of the history of Somerville, and, and perhaps even more importantly, the pride that it will uh, uh, engender among the, the very diverse community of Somerville. People and I'm proud to be part of it, I, I, and I, to live here in this, in this I am too. terrific city. I'm really I think, uh, historically, we're at a point in time where if we move forward and look into the future, and the B is bringing, putting Somerville on the map and making Somerville a part, an integral part of the American Revolution at its beginnings. Everybody, Longfellow uh, uh, painted a portrait, I think, uh, in words and rhyme about Concord and Lexington, but never Somerville. If you read the poem start to finish, you never hear about Somerville. You hear about the Midford, the right. Bell at Midnight right. at Medford right. in Arlington, All yeah. except oh. that you never hear Somerville, even well, though he rode through well, Somerville. Somerville wasn't incorporated as a city. You touched on this earlier. Somerville wasn't, didn't become its own city until For 150 town. years ago. Yes, it was Charlestown beyond the neck. Wasn't mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Uh, and, uh, but I think with this uh, project and letting everyone in Somerville know uh, about the history of this first flag raising. It seven, puts Somerville seven, seven, on the map. And hopefully and in the history a books. Major, history books. A major That's part in the beginnings of the American Revolution with George Washington. He slept every place, but no one ever said he slept in Somerville. <laughs> because he worked but he here rose every day. But he, wrote, he raised a flag in Somerville. He worked here every day. Yes. I always say Cambridge was just a bedroom yeah. community. I don't know if you'll yeah. put that in, but yes, you know, this is not this Cambridge. is where the men were, horrible. and Boston was under siege. This is really where it was at. I mean, even before George came here, all the militia had gathered on these hills from the um, Vermont and New Hampshire, and you know, they only appointed George to be commander in chief after this had happened. After there was already militia here. Then and she's totally unselfish. When she first came to my office and asked for the wall, I was uh, somewhat in trepidation of, of, uh, of what the reasons were. And eventually when she gave me uh, a rendition uh, of, of the, the arch and the George Washington, the American first reading American play, I got very excited by it. And I acquiesced almost immediately. And she began fundraising and I uh, volunteered to make a substantial contribution myself. And uh, if she runs out of funds, she knows that uh, I'm going to help her again. Well, we won't. Thank uh, you very much. We won't Thank twist you, your arm on that, but uh, we appreciate that, Frank. And uh, you, we really appreciate someone like you here in some of them. Uh, that's it. Uh, I think that uh, you'll all want to be at uh, Prospect Hill on January 1st and we'll the flag there. raising with Isabel Cheney and Fred Lund. And then what time is it, John? That's at 11 o'clock. Uh, yeah. But then uh, everyone will be coming right down to uh, the, uh, the dedication. We're going to try to lure them down with refreshments also. <laughs> It'll be refreshments. <laughs> Wonderful. What happens if uh, 76,000 Somervillians show up? You don't really It'll need be great. To. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be New Year's Day, and if the celebration the night before is such that I think we'll only be able to get half an hour <laughs> by 11 o'clock in the morning. It's a real exciting thing to be And I'd like in. to th take this opportunity to thank B. Allen on behalf of all the people in Somerville for having done so much for so long, for so little, for the city of Somerville. And I want to thank her for allowing me to be part of it. I'd like to take some <laughs> to thank Frank Trevatera, whom people warned me I would never be able to get around. <laughs> no. yeah, you're good. But it uh, happened. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you all January 1st. Thank you.